Hi, this is George Alger with another segment of Our Ventura TV. Today we're speaking with Lynn Fairley, who is a radio hostess for the Ventura County show, Lynn Fairley and Friends. Welcome, Lynn. Well, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. So we're going to talk about radio, and let's cover a number of points, but let's just start with you. So what is the, um, you know, what has inspired you to get into radio? Well, I've been in theater often, on and off, all my life. Um, I also worked for an international airline, Air France, for years and years, and I traveled around the world doing PR and marketing for them. I lived in New York City for a while in Manhattan, and part of my job was going out on the street to interview people, take polls, and uh, just find out things that people wanted to know about Air France in particular. Um, so fast forward, come back here to Los Angeles and uh, got married and then spent a lot of time kind of just being a housewife and helping my husband with his business and then when that all kind of settled down and got going really well, um, I decided to come back up into this area because I am from Santa Barbara. I'm homegrown and my folks still live there fortunately. Um, my dad suffers from really advanced Alzheimer's. So it's been a perfect time for me to come and take care of my dad and be here in this area. So whilst I was here, I thought, I need something to do. And Coach Ron Tunick had a show on KBTA. No, actually it was KKZZ 1400. And he was looking for a co-hostess. So I was on that show for a while with Coach and, and kind of got, got back into um, public speaking that sort of thing. And did some voiceovers and some MC work for the local film festival. I worked the red carpet for the Santa Barbara International Film Festival and I just really enjoy that type of contact. So at one point, uh, KVTA had an opening uh, for someone to have their own show because we do community radio on the weekends. That's how we sustain our FCC license is by doing uh, community radio from early Saturday mornings all the way through late night Sundays and then we're back to syndicated radio Monday through Friday. Um, so I took that spot, I jumped on it, it's noon on Saturdays and I call the show Lynn Fairley and Friends. Lately I've been calling it the Lynn Fairley and Fabulous Friends <laughs> show because you folks are the fabulous part. And I've had so much fun doing it. So that's the, the nutshell version of how I got that show and that's about two years, I'm two years into it now. Good. Let's speak a little bit about the history of radio in Ventura County as you know it. In 1947, the signal that we're now broadcasting from, 1590, so all of you still trying to find us on 1520, dial it a little up to the right because 1590 is where we are now. We've had a huge campaign, even on the bus, trying to let you know that we're now at 1590. It's been in service in our area since 1947, along with 95.1 and it was called KUDU at that time, okay? Um, and this was probably long before even black and white television, right? You've seen pictures and history books of everybody with the ear to the radio, listening to the, say, the presidential speech or maybe the bombing of Pearl Harbor or something like that, but radio was a central factor in a person's life and the radio was a huge thing in the living room. And people after dinner, say around 5, 5.30, would turn it on and, and listen to stories being told on the radio. So in light of that, I, I wanted to tell stories and I wanted to tell stories about the local people and that's what I've been doing on my show. So 1590 was KUDU in 1947. Today it's KVTA. Stick some duct tape on that dial and never move it. <laughs> cool. So in terms of radio, I mean, we, it goes back a long ways. I mean, hell, heck, radio goes back before TV for sure. Yeah. Um, and what about the cultural influence of radio as you might know it? I mean, because you just, you know, the idea of Pearl Harbor, I mean, it brings up pretty strong images from my mind. What else can you speak to about well, that? Well, sports have always been broadcast mm -hmm. on radio and still are. And, you know, you're in your car commuting a lot in this particular state, and so it's your companion. It's, it's your... Uh, 1590s, your new best friend. And uh, so radio has been a part of our lives for as long as I've been alive and before that, my parents' lives, probably my grandparents' lives, uh, a way to reach out across the airwaves and, and, and communicate with each other. It's, it's really important. And then FM's usually been music. Sometimes I'll put a live band, uh, especially around the holidays, in the studio and just play music because I know people are tired of hearing me flap my trap maybe, but uh, 
radio has always been there in my life. I don't know anybody right now that didn't have radio in their lives. So it's, it's, it's been an important thing. I don't think it's going away, even though most of radio is going to, a lot, not most, a lot of radio is going to the internet. Because I'll talk in a minute about the future of radio. But I don't think radio in the car, particularly in the car with sports, with music, is really going to go anywhere. XM radio is new. Satellite radio, look at that. We went from terrestrial radio to satellite radio. That's amazing. In just a short period of time. What maybe, there wasn't any satellite radio in 20 years ago? How, how new is XM radio? I'm not sure. I don't recall. Yeah, maybe the military probably had it before we. But uh, look at that. That's, that's an explosion in radio. So I don't think radio necessarily is going away in the format that we broadcast, and that is from a signal right here in Port Wainimi. Our signal reaches from Santa Inez down to Santa Monica, from Port Wainimi all the way out to Simi Valley. That's a giant audience. How do we know who's listening? There's an outside independent company called Arbitron. And they send out these little black books, and people do these random surveys and send them back. And they figure out how many pe pe persons per minute is tuned into our channel, whether they're tuning in and tuning off of our channel. Don't do that. Don't turn off. <laughs> but anyway, um, like for Spence and the guys early morning, that, that 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. show, which is so, so popular, that's uh, commuter radio in a way, you could say. Uh, they have a huge audience. It's, I think, something like 250,000 people a minute could be listening to Spence and the guys in the morning. You know, Tom Spence and Rich Galano and those guys. It's a very, very popular show. And then the syndicated ABC radio comes in between 9 and 5. And then we have sports after 5, so you can hear the Lakers uh, try and play. And then on the weekends is myself, Tom and Sandy, Horsepower for an Hour, Ron Grant and all those cool shows, Kim Commando, all those shows you can count on on the weekend on KVTA 1590. Good. So now let's talk about the, the future of radio as you see it. Well, I am impressed that we went from terrestrial to satellite radio. And at that time, everybody was a little worried that terrestrial radio would take a big hit because we do depend on advertisers and nonprofits to support us and we support the nonprofits as a matter of fact a great deal on the radio particularly community radio and so um, it, it didn't it didn't crash the terrestrial radios in fact I think I think that fellow Rush Limbaugh is heard probably the number one radio voice in America and then there's Glenn Beck and there's Sean Hannity and all those guys. Huge, huge audiences and they didn't go away. It didn't diminish terrestrial radio at all. So we're sort of, if you look back, we're sort of in the golden age of radio actually. When you think about it, because all we did is go from terrestrial to satellite and we just expanded radio in general. Now it's going to the internet. So all of you that want to have a show, you can go to the internet, something like uh, womansradio.com click on how to host a radio show. You got a laptop and you got a camera and you've got a microphone and you can start your own radio show, start blogging and start your own little radio show tonight if you wanted to. Become a hostess on womensradio.com, which is a very cool site, by the way. Um, and I, we're going to see more and more of that because our younger generations are very much uh, about the internet. So in 50 years from now, Will our youngest generation be, or our unborn generation, be strictly listening to internet radio? Perhaps. Although, the, one of the main, main functions of a local radio signal is for weather, traffic, and emergencies. So 1590 is where you would go if we had an emergency. God forbid an earthquake or a tsunami or a big, huge tangle on the, on the freeway here or an odd weather event. That's where you tune in to find out what to do because we're on it. We, you, know, you hear that little boop, 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 emergency signal test all the time on our signal. You're not going to find that that easily on the internet. You could find news, but you wouldn't find instant information. So KVTA 1590 in our Santa Barbara and Ventura counties is where you'd go for, for emergency information. So we will always have that. So I don't think the future of terrestrial radio is going to disappear at all. And the more community radio we can do, the better. But I encourage internet radio, and I'm happy to have XM in my car. So radio to me has just gotten bigger and better. Yeah, that makes sense. In fact, um, I know that you can listen to radio stations around the world. So for instance, if, if I were to go to Asia, for instance, I could listen to your show. Yes. 
Uh, what is actually is your show also online? Live streaming live on the web. Yes, kvta.com. However, we had to take the streaming live down for a little bit because we're switching from we sw changed signals. We went from 1520 to 1590. So until we have all that worked out online and the phone number changed as well, we're not streaming live at the moment. But we'll have that back up on kvta.com like we did before where you can go anywhere in the world and listen to uh, us streaming live. Whenever you want. And there's podcasts on everybody's show and various different websites and so on. So do you have podcasts for all of yours then? So I do have podcasts. Okay. And, I, and people ask me to email them around and I send them all over the world and sometimes I just uh, direct them to the podcast. But I have more fun emailing my podcast to different people, um, getting feedback from them and that sort of thing. So if you want any of my shows, I've got them. Um, what else? Are they archived online now? Uh, I have them archived online. Okay. Yes, I do. Good. Yeah, because that'd be kind of interesting. You talk to to Joe and you know last month or whatever, and say, like, okay, and I remember he was talking about X, Y, Z, and I want to hear that again, so mm -hmm. you can go back to it. So that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that's a big advantage. I grew up loving radio, and I'm still a big radio fan. Although I have to say, I do I listen to most of it online just because it is readily available to mm -hmm. me. But it's still, you know, it's still radio. Well, I grew up with a transistor. I was, you know, I was so excited in the late 60s or whenever it was and we all got to go out and run out and get a little transistor from like Radio Shack or some place like that. It was a very big deal. We had the one channel, one AM, one FM and you know, I remember all the guys thinking that if they took a transistor to the beach, they'd get all the girls. Remember those days? I don't know, maybe you're younger than me, but uh, transistor radios, portable radios, that was a huge big deal. Oh, yeah. So that was a huge landmark in my life. So I think radio, I was very, very much introduced to radio through the Dodgers, baseball games. My dad constantly played on the radio, and my own transistor radio that I think I slept with. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yes, I've had a really fun time doing a particularly interesting project on my show called The Face of Ventura, which is over. But The Face of Ventura was brought to me by Sheldon Brown, and it was part in the breeze every week. There was a story written about these people, and they were all painted by Johanna Spinks. Did you interview the artist Johanna Spinks? So you know about The Face of Ventura project. Well, I got to do all the interviews, and we've really lucked out because the whole project's been donated, including the voices, to the local museum. Our little museum here on Main Street has, uh, will, be, um, ha will have the portraits as a permanent collection at the end of March, as well as all the voices. So they're going to archive every single one of my radio shows and, and Sheldon's, Sheldon Brown's articles. And what I like about it, since it's a multimedia platform, is you'll be able to go see the person, but you'll also go, you'll be able to hear the person's voice, particularly if they've passed on, what a wonderful thing to, to be able to have is the, the story, the, the picture, and then be able to hear them speak. Because that's some, one of the things I think I would miss if um, someone were to pass away dear and near to me is wanting to hear their voice. Yeah. Uh, it's all going to be at our local museum. That's cool. Yes. Oh. So that's the main archive of my shows. Good. Well, we're just about out of time. Maybe we can just wrap up with two points. Uh, one would be a way that people could get in touch with you if, mm -hmm. they, if they wanted, and, and two, any final message you'd like to convey to the viewers. If you'd like to tell your story on my show, you've got a fabulous story, and everybody does, call me up. 818 is my area code, so it's easy to remember because I've got a weird area code. 818-601-0182, or just Google Lynn Fairley. Spell Lynn, L-Y-N, only one N. Fairly is just as it sounds, F as in Frank, A-I-R-L-Y. And let's see if we can put you on the radio. Don't move it. It's KVTA 1590 AM. My show Saturday at noon. Oh, great. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. My pleasure. All right, well, this is George Alger signing off for another segment of Our Ventura TV. Until we see you again. Ciao.